Hey guys, I want to get started working on the products page. Now before we can really display any products, we need products. So to help us create products, we're going to be creating a form where users can fill stuff out and products will show up on this page. So I'm going to add a button on this page that's like takes us to another screen where we can actually create a product. So I'm going to just grab a view and a button from React Native. And we might restyle this guy later, but for now we're just going to have a text component. Or not a text component, just a regular button component. I'm thinking like it would be nice to have like a floating component, a floating action button, but we'll get into that styling this guy a little bit later. Alright, so title I'm just going to say uh, create product. And then on press, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and change pages. So the change pages, I'm going to get the history from the props and I'm just going to uh, transition pages. So history.push and we're going to gotta go to slash new product. And now we don't have a new product page so let's create that. Um, let's, add a little bit of, oops. let's let this thing reformat and new route call this new product.js and let's see we're gonna need to change our routes or not change it but add a new one so new product and this is going to use the new product component so new product new product and then over here our new product is going to be very similar um, and we're getting a little warning because this is empty I believe uh, very similar to like how our sign up page is going to work so we can just copy that at least that we're going to have a form right and we want to I'm going to center it why not we'll just stick with that formatting um, we'll come back to the GraphQL in the next video this one we're just going to lay out the form because the GraphQL is going to be actually a little bit interesting but we are going to be using a text field we don't care about tokens um, the values here we can check out I forget actually what fields we're using um, the ones we care about are name, picture URL, price, and seller. Well, actually, seller we don't really care about. So really just um, these three. The name of the product, the price, and a picture for it. So we already have name here. Let's add a price. And by default, we'll say the price is $0. And then we'll have a picture URL. And then that'll be empty for now. Um, class, I'm going to call this new product. And we're going to have a form inside here. We can export default new product. And we're going to get rid of the GraphQL for now. And so on submit, we're going to be doing some interesting things. We're going to be mutating, passing the state. This is pretty much what's going to happen. We might change what happens here and here. So I'm going to just comment that out for now. And we'll deal with that later. On change, this is fine. Our on change is going to be the same, right? Because we're just going to be updating the value here. We don't care about async storage, so we don't need to import it. Um, we're not really going to have any links out to other pages. And we're going to go to products on submission. That's good. So let's destructure these. We're going to have a name, a picture URL, and then this thing is going to be price, is the last one. All right, so we're gonna have two text fields and then kind of a special field that we're gonna do for the picture URL. So price, and here we're gonna say, we don't need an or, we're gonna say create product. Or we could say add product, right? We're not really creating it. Um, so if we go here, we can see value of type number supplied textbook expected string all right let's actually just make price a string and they can get cast to a float later all right so we got our pro our name and our price we can say 0.33 um, we're not really doing any validation on that right now maybe we'll do validation later this is actually where um something like formic is really nice for validation but I've done a lot of form validation. I think I'm just going to skip that. Okay, let's, we have, we're gonna show errors for the email. 
let's get rid of that because we don't have any email we might show errors for this but this is really what I wanted to do in this video was how are we going to get the picture URL right and let's get rid of this since we're not going to use it so on a phone if I am uploading a picture of a product I really want to pick a, either take a picture right away or take something from my pictures on my phone so if you've used any apps before that need a picture usually you can just go through your pictures on your phone and with Expo you can actually do this so there is a image picker um, component and we already are using Expo so we can actually just copy this um, little image picker and we're going to use it for ours so I'm just going to paste them at the bottom and then take the little snippets that we need now you'll notice how we're importing image picker from Expo and we actually don't need to install that package but because by default we actually have Expo in our dependencies because create react native app comes with it alright so we don't care about these things right here I'm gonna move image picker to the top because we do need that um, and let's see what's going on here so you notice here what they're doing is uh, the usual right they're having a state for the image and then they're updating the state when they get it and I'm just going to delete this because we don't need that um, and it looks like how they're rendering is they're rendering a button to click or the rendering the image if the image exists so we can copy this bit and I'm gonna put it right here so you specify a name a price and then we'll put the image underneath and then we can copy this pick image uh, function which is really the only thing we need right all right and we don't need this all right so we called ours picture URL picture URL so I'm gonna put that there and this I'm just gonna call it pick image without an underscore because um, there's really no reason to do an underscore here async and you notice we're calling this launch image library async so this is something coming from Expo um, the image picker so cool and looks like we're just setting the state afterwards now for us we need to set the state a little bit differently um, we don't need to console log the results it's just going to be the URL to the thing so here we're going to say really we can call change text we want to do the same thing that we're doing here so well, let's call it so on change text and what are we going to pass as our parameters well the value we want to change which is picture URL and then pass in the value which is this and this is going to update our state updating this value with that and we'll, we're about to see that um, and after we actually select so let's see what this looks like um, it doesn't like it because of this so image we can import uh, from react native so we don't need text anymore I'll just grab image and I don't see any more errors let's see if this is good raw text cannot be used outside of text um, where are we doing raw text? I don't know where, I think I'm guessing this. So we're gonna do a or, we're gonna render null. I don't see any other area where we're, we're showing raw text. Yeah, that was it. So sometimes when you do the and, it'll actually render an empty string. Uh, that's why you need to use ternary like this sometimes, that'll give you problems. Okay, so these guys are just uh, hitting up against each other. I really don't think we need this um, outside view. I think that's what's probably messing it up. Yep, so pick an image from a camera roll or add product. Now this isn't the prettiest styling and kind of hard to read, but uh, it'll do. So now when I click on this button, what happens? This pick image is going to occur, which should launch a image library that I can select an image. So let's click it. Uh, nothing's really happening. Oh, it just took a second. And actually, let's see if I have something that slows. I made a video about this, slow animations. I think I have mine. Okay, good. Uh, ticked off. I just want to make sure because that can slow things down. So let's pick this waterfall. Choose. And nice. So we see the waterfall showing up here. So that's how uh, we can select images with our phone we really didn't need to do a lot of work right so we get the result of the picture that they chose and all we're doing after that is grabbing the 
uh, updating the picture, you're uh, updating the state. And now that we have an image, we are going ahead and rendering the image. So we're just conditionally rendering an image, right, if we have one. Now I believe if we click on this, we should be able to click a different one and overwrite what we have. So choose, now we have a new image. So nice, so this is how we can import, or not import, but choose images and uh, add a form with images on React Native. So in the next video, what we're going to be doing is actually uploading this to our server. So how are we uploading with GraphQL an image? And it's actually quite interesting. So we'll get to that. But uh, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.